for anyone interested in the title, this one would be Atonement, its first mention. That's the title of this sermonette. Atonement, its first mention. Leviticus 23 is where the Day of Atonement is first told in the Bible. But atonement, the idea itself, is actually presented much earlier. Uh, we'll go to a surprising place, which may not, uh, many of us may not have considered. We're going to Genesis. Go to Genesis chapter 6. Let's turn there now. We know the basic story. The world, the world had, be, had, had fallen, had become sinful. God was sparing one family, eight people, on one boat with the animals. Let's look at verse, chapter 6, verse 14, where God commands Noah, Make you an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shall you make in the ark, and you shall pitch it within and without with pitch. You got two English words called pitch, but they're two different Hebrew words. There's definitely different meaning in those. Now, the first word pitch, which is the action word, you know, Noah go pitch and you know, paint the ark uh, with, with uh, pitch. That is the word Strong's 3722. It's kafar. Kafar actually means to cover, purge, make an atonement, make reconciliation, cover over with pitch. So this is what Noah is told to do, an action word, cover over with pitch. But it also means to cover over, pacify, to atone for sin, make atonement for, to cover over, atone for sin and persons by legal rights, and to make atonement for. So here is two very different and very powerful meanings packed in one word. This is what Noah was told to do. Now this word, the word kafar, that was the first word pitch. The second word pitch in that verse is he's being told, okay, you pitch it with pitch. That word is, the second word, is Strong's 3724, kofur. Now that's an interesting word. It's asphalt, pitch, as in, as in a covering, from the henna plant, name of a plant, and interestingly also, the price of a life or a ransom. God packs a lot of meaning in just a few words and just a few sentences. Now, the word kafar, the first word pitch, is translated 71 times in the Old Testament atonement. 71 times. And only once is it translated here for pitch, as in bitumen, you know, uh, paint the, the tar and the bitumen on it. The rest of the time, 71 times atonement, purge seven times, reconciliation four times, reconcile three times, forgive three times. So here is God packing all this meaning and symbolism in, the, in that word pitch. Now step back and look at what the time was and look at the situation. Here was a world totally universally loaded with sin, violence, perversion, everything. And what was Noah told to do? Pitch and seal the ark. It wasn't just, it wasn't just bitumen. I think God's using symbolism here that he was sealing off the ark from the rest of the world, the eight people and the animals that were being saved. And here's another interesting thing. There actually is a Hebrew word for pitch, a totally separate word, and it's not used here. It's, it's Strong's 2203. It's zeteth or asphalt. So God knows how to call things what they are. So, so think of what's being done here. The symbolism of being sealed, of being covered. I think we think what God's doing here is today, here is today, the Day of Atonement, and a uh, a, a large sermon is going to cover all the, all the meaning of it. I'm just focusing on the word atonement. But, here is, but here's what's happening. 
In the Bible, God used that word, the same word to cover the ark is the same word for atonement used 71 times. So God is packing all this meaning. He wants us to get the idea in us, what is atonement? We'll get to that in a little bit. The theme of atonement itself is contained in dozens of verses, especially in Exodus and Leviticus. And what, ha what has happened is today is a very important day, which Mr. Newell in his sermon is going to, going to cover, God's holy day, the reconciliation of man, the removal of sin, all of that. What I'd like to do is go a little further and get us thinking more of what is atonement? What is the symbolism? For example, God's judgment was water. It was covering the earth, wipeout the flood. What is uh, being, again, the idea of covering? What happens with our sins later on in our lives when we come to Christ and are baptized? They are covered. Think of the word atonement, think of the word cover, think of the word to reconcile, all put together. In Leviticus 1, we're not turning there, there was a burnt offering given where atonement was made for that man. The same word. There are multiple verses in the Old Testament. I don't have time to, to do them all, but here is God teaching the church, teaching the human race. This is what atonement is. It is covering of sin. It is being reconciled. It is forgiveness. All of these words are all built in there. Here is another thing that atonement can stand for. Now, I, we're not turning there, but in Exodus 30, there was a sin offering for atonement. Atonement, that is for cleansing. So atonement, covering, cleansing, forgiveness. Now, finally, I'd like to focus on the main and the very obvious area of the New Testament where we look at atonement. And that is a blood sacrifice of our Savior over us. We are being saved. Sin is being covered. We are baptized. We are covered. And we are, are going to be reconciled with God. And Christ is what is the being whose death does that. It was a fascinating thing I ran across in, in Exodus 30 where it talks about how every Israelite had to pay half a shekel only. And what was interesting about that, it was the same price for atonement. For rich or poor, it was irrelevant. Same price for everybody. And in uh, Romans, it, uh, God talks about, through, through Paul, that Christ was the propitiation and atonement for us.